tremendous effort by our players tonight. Um, it's not easy to, to uh, defend BYU. Um, it's actually extremely hard. Not easy is not the best way to say it. It's extremely hard to defend them. Many, many try. Uh, I think every they've had over 70 in every game since some point in January. Uh, the last time, you know, so uh, they put a lot of 80s, 90s, at 100. Um, the way they shoot the ball, the way they pass the ball and space you. So uh, took everything our guys had on the defensive end tonight. That's where our focus was. And we were able to take them off the three-point line. So uh, it wasn't easy, though. Uh, I can't tell you how hard that was for our guys and how proud I am of, of how hard they played. Um, played with a lot of pride. You know, I remind, try to remind them here um, who they play for to get their confidence back. Uh, you know, they, they, they practice in a gym with 11 banners hanging. So uh, it was a big win. Uh, congratulations to BYU on their season. Alex uh, Barcelo had a great game. He's, he, he's obviously a great kid, great player. It's, it's always... Uh, it's all, you know, guys like him are great for college basketball. But uh, our guys stepped up. Obviously, Johnny had a big game um, coming off the ankle. But, uh, you know, Tiger was – he didn't make a lot of shots, but his defense was big. You know, Barcelo um, and Averett are just re you're really, really good guards, and they can cause you a lot of problems. So, um, great win for us. Thanks, Coach. Again, me, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll do our best to get to as many of you as we can. Ben Bolt, your line's open. Please go ahead. Hey, Coach. A uh, lot of great contributors tonight. The moment that really kind of crystallized the toughness of the team for me was when uh, Jaime went up and grabbed that rebound away from Harms and, and just, you know, really showed a lot of toughness there. What did it mean to, to that kind of play and bring that tenaciousness? Well, I mean, it, look, I, I will say this. Um, you know, we don't have any seniors, right? So you, you got guys, Johnny sat on a bench at Kentucky last year. You know, Jaime's a sophomore. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of young guys. You know, we got, you got uh, what, three sophomores in the starting lineup. Kenneth Nuba gave us big minutes. I was so proud. He's such a good kid. I was so happy to see him be able to give us some minutes tonight. Um, you know, because his, his uh, defense was much needed. You know, for us to be able to, to win the first half by 11 without Cody Riley was was really the key to the game. You know, when he went out with his second, you know, immediately my mind goes to, I got to get to halftime where we're still in this game, you know, when Cody gets that second foul so quickly. But uh, I thought we were tough. Just our effort and our toughness was there all night, and it had to be because they're really, really hard to play defense against, Ben, really hard. Dylan Hernandez is next. Dylan, please go ahead. Hi, Mick. Hey, Dylan. Um, you know, Juzan was just on here and he was talking about how we don't plan to go home. Um, you know, I know you spoke after the previous game about what that victory meant for your, you know, the, your team psychologically. Uh, where do you feel you guys are now after, you know, really kind of taking the game to them, and especially in that first half? Well, I think, you, you know, look, um, we, we had some tough times late in the year, but, you know, playing, playing good teams makes, you know, it can either kill you. Um, or, or it makes you better because you have, it's so hard to win, you know, and you're, you're finding out, uh, that the PAC 12 not being ranked all year was an absolute joke. And some people ought to be ashamed of themselves. Now, you know, maybe people can't stay up late and I don't blame them cause I can't either. So, you know, where I live, the, the sun shines all day and it comes up early. So I get up early. So maybe people can't stay up for our games, but I've been doing this a long time. And then, you know, back in 2011, I can uh, I coach in a league where 11 teams made the NCAA tournament. Uh, the national champion finished in a tie for ninth, 10th, and 11th. So I, I, you know, I know good teams. So like Oregon State, Oregon, uh, Colorado, SC, you know, those teams winning is just not a surprise at all to me. It's just not a surprise. I know we didn't have great early season stuff, um, but that's COVID and scheduling was way against us. And, and in, you know, on the West Coast, man, you know, our teams, we didn't have a whole summer where the rest of the country had workouts in the summer. We didn't. So I think the Pac-12, what we play, the teams we played down the stretch has really prepared us for the NCAA tournament. Um, I was just concerned with getting the first win 
because Michigan State at Purdue, not you know where they're going to have more fans than us, um, you know, in the gym they're comfortable in. I I thought if we could get by that game, we could get some momentum. So, um, you know, I don't know who we play in our next game, and obviously everybody's good at this point. So, but it's really about us right now. Uh, our guys are extremely connected, so it's you know. We we just gotta gotta continue with uh, our focus on, on whatever it takes to win. Tracy Pearson, please go ahead. Hey Mick, a uh, couple of tactical questions for you. It looked like to me you you chose not to double harm in the post. Correct. A bit. And if you could say what went into that, and then also what what. What was the strategy when they started uh, shadowing Juzang in the, in the second half? Um, well, first, uh, your first question uh, would be the obvious answer, right? Which I already know. You got to ask me, but I know you know it, Tracy, right? We did, we wanted to not not give up a bunch of threes. You know, I thought, you know, a team like BYU, the three point shot is their fuel. Um, you know, they almost beat Gonzaga last. You know, whenever it was ten days or so ago, because they came out raining them in. Um, you know, they also count. For, for one more point than a, than a harm's bucket on the interior, excuse me. So uh, that was our philosophy. Uh, you know, if they scored a few buckets inside, we were going to live with it. We were just, uh, we were doing everything we could to try to disrupt their offense and take away the three-point shot. And, um, you know, with Johnny, when they went into denial, which, you, you, you know, which I, you do is use that guy as a screener um, because his man can't switch off then whoever comes off his screen is going to be wide open. And we, and we had some guys at the basket. Now, you know, obviously, hey, Tiger had a, a rough night. If he makes open shots, you know, it's a, we win 20-plus. But David, that, you know, I want to mention David. That You know, David gave us some big minutes today. He's a great kid. I'm really happy for him. He's a really, really, really good kid. Adam Grossbar, your line's open. Please go ahead. Adam Gross, part of Orange County Register. Mick, after BYU cut the lead to four in the second half, your team made four of its next five to go back up 11. Uh, when BYU called timeout after a David mid-range, you gave a really enthusiastic, enthusiastic fist pump. Like, what's going through your mind in that moment? Yeah, you know, with this team, um, you know, we are from Southern California. So at times, times uh, you know, I have to uh, do everything I can to inject – uh, some intensity. Now, Coach Palmer would tell you where he's from in Compton. Um, you know, it's a little, it's, you know, a little bit tougher. So, you know, he helps with it. Uh, our coaching staff. You know, we just, we just know. You know, with our guys. Um, you know, we and again, we don't have any seniors, so we're, we're just trying to make sure that uh, they're that they're dialed up and that they're they're an aggressive mindset. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, just belief and having fun, man. I mean, look, this has been brutal on these kids. It's been brutal on everybody. Um, you, you know, Indianapolis is such a great city. You know, I've been here a million times living, you know, being from Cincinnati. It'd be so nice to be able to go out and get something to eat. I'd like to take a walk. Um, you know, my whole family's here. I can't see them. So we got to try to have some, some assemblance of fun. And tonight was a very fun game for, for me as well as the guys. Sean Haylock, please go ahead. We're Sean Haylock, Fate Taylor 5, Los Angeles. Uh, congrats on the win, Coach. Thank uh, you. What, what impressed you the most about uh, Johnny tonight? And um, also, can you comment on, on how, he, how he got after it defensively? Well, that's what I would say, Rashawn. Uh, you know, we just, uh, Coach Lewis and I were messing with him. You know, he's in trouble. He's in trouble because now we know he's capable defensively. You know, um, there was a play that, where Jules and Jaime had the same guy because um, they run their offense so fast. And Johnny guarded the guy by the rim and the guy in the weak side corner. He was watching them both, and the passer was trying to figure out, you know, who am I going to throw it to? And Johnny was – he was messing with him. He was locked in. Um, but, again, you know, Johnny's young, man. He, you know, last year he should have been a senior in high school. So he's improved immensely. You know, part of it with him is, you know, it's my job to teach him how to do that stuff. And it takes some time to train guys. But uh, he obviously was, you know, had a huge game for us. Billy Witz, please go ahead. Nick, hi. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. You, it seems like uh, quite often you can put five guys on the court who are capable of getting their own shot. And even like Singleton was, um, you know, uh, I don't know if those were 
that was you running plays for him. But mm -hmm. I'm just wondering where kind of when you have so many, you know, skilled guys offensively like that, sometimes everybody can th think that, uh, you know, it, they can be the one that uh, the ball's in their hands. How is that? It, it, is, is the togetherness and the unselfishness that's been on display the last couple of games, is that something that's been there from the start or has it uh, taken some time to develop? Uh, that has, you know, um, that's really never an issue with my teams. I think the guys understand, you know, we're going to play to win. You know, the open man's the go-to man. But there's times, I, you know, my guys, they, the more they get to play for me, they know, like, there's a time where um, we talk about mismatches and guys that we, we feel like we can attack defensively, meaning, you know, we can get certain guys on the other team where we, can, we feel we can get them isolated. And, um, you know, the, the, you know, the guys know that it's at that point where I, that's what we work on. We spend a lot of time on individual instruction. So that's your time to score, get fouled or create a shot for somebody when you, you can get uh, when we go to you in that situation. So, yeah, some some of that uh, a lot of that's by design. Um, you know, we're trying to trying to pick our poison, whether it's get, you know, we got Jaime a few post ups. Got him some shots early. He was hot. You know, and the guys understand that they know I'm trying to go to the mismatch. Um, and they, they know that, uh, just cause we go to you, you may, you, you know, your job is to score, you know, if you can create a bucket, but if you, you know, if they help, you gotta be a passer. Um, so, you know, and when you play small, you gotta be good on offense. You know, we, we play Jaime's a guard and we play, you know, we play four guards. So if you're not good on offense, uh, you can't play small because, uh, you, you're just not gonna, you know, we don't block a lot of shots. Um, and we were pesky though with our lack of size tonight, and that's how we got to be defensively. Time for two more quick questions. Sam Conan, please go ahead. Hey, coach, congrats on the win. Uh, I, I know you guys were, were minus six on the boards in the first half, but plus two in the second. I know that big one that Jaime had with 50 seconds left, ripping it away from Harms. How proud are you guys for? Or how proud are you of your guys for kind of stepping up on the boards despite a little bit of a size advantage down the stretch? Yeah, we're plus six and second chance points, so that's really what matters. You know, they got a few on us. Um, Caleb Lawner hurt us in the first half. He had four, but he had none in the second half. And you, ha Sam, you have to switch so much uh, because they're so hard to defend with their with their uh, pace and space offense. That uh, you got John, you know, first half we had Johnny and different guys trying to block out Caleb Lawner. And then we had our big man really uh, semi trapping pick and rolls. So it's hard for him to get back sometimes to uh, some of their bigger guys, whether it was uh, uh, Harward or, or uh, Harms. So, you know, we, we, when you play defense aggressively, it, it's, it, it exposes your defensive backboard. But uh, as you can see, you know, we're much better. Uh, here the last second half of the Michigan State game and this game when we're aggressive on defense. But it is going to affect you because you get spread out more, so it's harder to hold down the defensive backboard. But somebody else asked it earlier, Sam. That, that Jaime's rebound late was big time, big time. Take one last one from Ben Bolch. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, you're playing Abilene Christian on Monday. Uh, do you have a reaction to, to being a, a favorite uh, for the first time in the tournament. They're showing me the score. Um, well, I owe Darren Savino lunch because he's scouting Abilene Christian and he told me they were going to win. And I said, you know, and I, I, you know, I saw their records tremendous. I, you know, I don't know what it is. You guys probably know it, you know, they have like 20, 23 and four. Yeah. And, um, so Darren said that, and I turned to TJ Wolf on my staff, and he said, Coach, he's right. They're, they're, they force 20 turnovers a game. Um, they're really, really good. That was just in passing. Um, so, um, it, it, you know, obviously they, the, I, they have a great coach. They, somebody forces 20 turnovers a game, that's unbelievable. I mean, they, I'm not, they, somebody just told me Texas had 23 turnovers, yeah, and they, they got senior, they got Jones, Ramey, um, they got serious guards now. Um, Matt Coleman, and they turn the ball over that many times. That means Abilene Christian's really, really good. That's what. That's all I can say. 